recently, um, and again, this is the nature of the business now, where people expect to do you know, minor detail yeah. tweaks again and again until sure, you get yeah, to a, yeah. a final point. Working through here, I'm obviously relying on recalls. Yeah. And despite great assistance like you know, Martha and Kelly, who can be very specific, so it's always, right? yeah. yeah, yeah. And also people want it quickly. Oh, can you just do this? And when you're going through an analog recall in the studio, it's not just do this. So you're talking no, an, hour, half an hour, an hour, right? Yeah. Um, and so I'm now pretty well back in the box. Even if I come out to use stuff, whatever, any of this junk, uh -huh. um, by the end of the project, by the end of the mix, I'm back in the box. I'll bounce it back in. Oh, will you? Okay, so bounce it so in. The, and then you can it also means, as I said, there's a second rig at home. Yeah. So if I have to do little tweaks, I can just load it up on that. Sure. So how do you deal with like, you know, your mix bus compression and all that kind of stuff? If you got, do you just take that off when you do your bounces and then you just put that back on that all, I mean. Well, with going, working in the box, yeah. then you, you kind of got your mix bus stuff going yeah. on as, as your output. Sure. You're going to combine the output. So using the, kind of, using the same things that I would do when I'm working analog, of course, 2500, yeah. SSL, um, maybe some overall EQ. So would you mix with that stuff on like the analog stuff and then when you, bounce those stems and take it home, would you just apply the same thing with like a plug in there? Now, when I was working more analog, um, I'd bounce without it Yeah, for stems. Sure. Assuming, see, because stems are always, for, as, as far as I was concerned, for us to use to get a mix back. Really. Yeah, yeah. Um, if they're going to be used for a remix or live, I don't think it makes much difference having no. the overall thing on. And sure. it makes more sense to me that you put them back without the overall yeah. and then put the overall back on again. It makes yeah. a better idea of the of the session. Yeah, yeah. But um, I must admit, most of it, nearly everything I have here, I have as a plug-in now. Yeah. But, you know, especially the UAD stuff. Yeah, right. Um, and so I'm probably using it less and less. I, I sometimes do just for me, because you know, I want to be playing around. It's good fun, right? Exactly. So, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. And we'll get things patched up, especially maybe when a mix is at a point and you just want to have a bit of a sort of free fall on it. Uh -huh. firing effects and things, see what happens to liven it up. If you get something, you get something. Um, and also for parallel kick compression, because despite delay compensation, I've always found it's a little bit well, not, yeah, yeah. Although I've been using it recently, it's been fine. And it's that kind of unpredictability of it, you know, where you get some sort of top yeah. phasing between the I same. I think it depends on the version of Pro Tools. Like I just upgraded to 12.6 recently, right. and it changed the delay conversation on the hardware inserts. There's a bug there, so. I okay, well, I'm now 12.5. Yeah, don't go to 12.6. Well, yeah. I have said that about yeah. a few other things as well, regarding MIDI as well. Yeah, okay. Um, and it's working fine, but that was the time I was using it out, because these channels here uh, are all stereos. So you could be coming up you know, your stereo kit out yeah. from tools, and then patch analog rather than yeah, of doing multiple sure. outputs. Yeah. Just because obviously you're then getting exactly the same thing up each channel. Yeah, yeah. And so there might be a, like the full on compression from uh, SSL. Yeah. TGs or some TG. So is that what you're using for your parallel compression, like TGs and stuff like that? Or yeah, the and the SSL 2500. I mean, I normally get yeah. them all set up and just play around with them okay. against the kit. Yeah. Also, maybe the culture vulture for a little bit of distortion, which you can yeah. just tuck in. Do you find with the culture vulture, like when I found when I put that on parallel for drums, it seems to do this weird phasing thing as well. And I don't know whether it's a unit that I'm using, it's not quite right, but um, I mean, a lot of people swear doing that on their drums. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. they're like, no, I haven't, uh, I haven't noticed. I haven't said that it's such a fucked up sound, anyhow. I know, it's yeah. like, what's going on? Is it a phase or not? Yeah. I normally just have it in as just a little bit of, sort of mid color zip yeah. to it. Yeah, and what you see in like all your drums, still, or just elements of it. It's not the whole kit if it's yeah. coming up there. Sure. Um, some must, I used to have bass drum and snare going out to parallel compressors and yeah. really slapping uh -huh. But I haven't really been doing that much recently. Just sure. Been, um, putting the whole thing out. Cool. Depends. If it's a kit with a lot of top kit going on, yeah. then it just gets a bit too... Nice. Harsh, simple stuff. Yeah. Like that, yeah. So, um, it's, you know, it depends what you're putting through. Right? 